We've spoken about Nikhil, the venture capitalist. Let's speak about Nikhil, the investor. Now, mm-hmm. I read this article, and please tell me I'm wrong. Yeah. That you invest 50% of your money in equities and 40% in debt, and the rest in gold. Is that true? It's right. Yeah. Yeah. I would say right now the number is lower. Equity component has come down to maybe 40 to 43 percent. But why? I'll tell you. Today, uh, when I talk to people on the ground, consumption seems to be falling in India very quickly. And I'm actually shooting a podcast on this because I don't know why, and I want to find out why. I think the very affluent is doing well. So it's like a K-shaped recovery that you're yeah, seeing. Yeah. Yeah. But how much consumption has fallen this year versus six months ago? Uh, something is not seen on the numbers, but on the ground, it's it is seemingly felt. And I don't think stock markets truly reflect that pain yet. Because mm. if I'm going to a to a store down the road and I'm looking at lesser pieces of fabric being bought or clothes being bought, but stock markets are seeing a completely different story, that to me is a different kind of arbitrage. Mm. I feel like on ground things are slowing down. Stock markets are selling another narrative. Hence, my number has come down from 50 to 42. And uh, I think I'm going to go down lower to like 39, 40% equity exposure. If the data available to me is consumption is slowing down, markets trading at 23, 22, 23 times earnings, significantly more expensive than historical average, which should be around 17, 18 times. And uh, the problems in our developed or more developed neighbors and Western peers uh, is a lot more acute and it is it is felt, right? Like if you go to Europe or London or the US, you can see the trauma and the trouble in the economy on the ground. Yeah. It, it's very uh, easy for you. It's very palpable. You can walk down the street and feel it. Uh, is there a use case to make that the world will slow down interest rates in America, for example, to buy a home uh, have gone up from 3% to 7, 7.5%. Similar things will happen here. In those prevailing circumstances, do you want to hold a 60, 70% equity exposure? I would think not. Mm. Yeah, I like gold. Uh, Traditionally, gold has been uh, inversely proportional to equity markets. I think that inverse correlation has gone away in the in the better part of the last decade but uh, long term i think gold will continue to beat inflation and uh, as a bet against inflation at least i'll i have 10 percent gold in my portfolio but i wouldn't feel bad taking it up to maybe 15 20 percent and okay yeah that's how risk averse you are towards equities now <laughs> that, yeah. that's not a good thing especially yeah. for uh, you know for people who are invested but um what what has been your best and worst investment in the last 20 years 20 years the very first investment i made when i was a kid working in a call center at 17 was a company called marsoft uh, I used to get paid, I don't know, seven, eight thousand rupees. And I took all that money and bought Marsoft shares at four. It was rupees. listed at that time. Yeah, it was listed okay. at that time. It shut down long time okay. ago. <laughs> I so never heard like, of it. It was a crap company. <laughs> Good you haven't heard about it. But the four rupee stock went up to I think fifteen rupees in a month or two, and that got me into trading. That's why it's it's so uh, infectious, right? Like dating trading is like dating. <laughs> There no, is right. a certain, so aside, huh? yeah. There is a certain. Uh, uh, it almost feels like markets have emotion and. It's sentiment. exciting. Yeah. yeah, and they have a way to draw you in. They're mm-hmm. always nicer at the beginning, and until it all goes downhill. Yeah, yeah. You can't say that. <laughs> then you cash out. <laughs> yeah. You can't say that. <laughs> no, I can't. No, I'm talking about you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, but okay, that was your worst yeah. investment. What about your best investment? That was my best one because I sold it at twenty. Oh. Okay, yeah. okay. And the worst? Something that, you know, you felt, oh my God, like this just should not have happened. Uh, worst. Single stock? Anything. I'm, I'm feeling a little like, you know, if I say something about a company, if I still have it, <laughs> I don't know. Maybe something that's not listed anymore. <laughs> yeah, right? I need to find something else. <laughs> Ideally, logically, you would assume that Uh, markets have been trending up for so long Uh, volatility index is so low that a black swan event is around the corner Mm. Uh, 
the way to attempt benefiting from these black swan events is by virtue of the guy who coined the term right like you try and trade like talib so talib doesn't run a fund now but when he ran a fund he would buy way out of the money calls and puts and uh, lose money 11 months out of 12 or 23 months out of 24 but that one month where a black swan event happened he would make up for all of it mm. if i were to tell sonia there is a 100 rupees that i will wager uh, this is the last 100 rupees in the world if you toss the coin and you win you will get a uh, 100 mm. but if you toss the coin and you lose you will lose 90 even though mathematically the odds are in your favor if it were the last 100 rupees in the world fear will be the superseding emotion yeah. in your heart mm-hmm. uh, so there have been times where i've tried to do what talib does uh, not work out of fear yeah okay so tell us about some of the recent events that have made all of us proud your trip to the white house how did that happen uh i think uh, i say a lot of i think and how does it feel no it's it's a really surreal feeling and uh, i think our prime minister has been uh, very kind to allow me in his vicinity as often as he does and uh, uh, the 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 weird thing here is you know everybody paints him a certain way but whenever you spend time with the man he is uh, very unlike somebody in his position all years He doesn't want to tell you what he thinks but he wants to listen to you and hear everything you have to say. Uh that is one of the most endearing things I have found uh about him after having spent time with and him. That's a great virtue to have. It's very tough. Being around him you learn so much. So this was a great experience. So in the US I got the opportunity to meet a lot of people who I loved the opportunity of asking them questions in a private domain which was not on camera. Uh I asked all the AI guys uh I think there are three leaders in that space now and each one of them what do you think personally will happen to the world? And uh we had like a private meeting where we had this very interesting debate uh about if you don't have to work what happens to society then? Mm. and uh, we debated this endlessly and we arrived at some kind of universal basic income in the world mm-hmm. if not now 30 40 50 years down the line will come about and maybe the society gets fractured into two extremes where at the very uh, at the halfway line and under we are socialist in nature mm-hmm. where uh, housing is free education is free medical is free you can have a good life uh, by not doing any work mm. and people can opt to do more and pursue capitalism at the second half the upper half of that quadrant mm. from a knowledge download standpoint it was incredibly it useful you i'm sure yeah. you know that brings me to a question nikhil mm. because you've gone through this journey right mm. there not too many people have gone through i mean from mm. the you were what you were a school dropout and mm. now to where you are mm. um has there ever been a time when you felt like okay now maybe i can take a step back and sit back and you know just retire do nothing i'm asking you because a lot of us work out of the fear of not having enough hmm. right but at what point hmm. do you feel okay this is enough so and i don't think i do anything for uh the need for more i don't think it is that uh I feel like we all need a vocation in life mm-hmm. and I'm in the position I have to understand you know I have to be cognizant to how lucky I have been in my life and I have the privilege to attempt a hundred different things without worrying about the economic imprint positive or negative of those things mm-hmm. uh so I don't think I'm doing everything in order to earn money I don't think I'm in that position in life right now. Personally, I flirt with boredom a lot. I've been a restless um Don't we all? <laughs> yeah, yeah. See, we are all constantly in this uh overthinking stu- mode, yeah. Stupid feedback loop that social media throws at us. Uh nobody is as happy as they look on social media. Nobody is doing as many things, you know. 
there's this constant um, internal chatter that goes mm. on and you know it's sometimes very hard to stop that mm. overthinking you got to make a conscious effort to do that and yeah i think stopping social media is a big help by virtue of social media algorithms kind of like putting so much bias in our lives mm. we subconsciously feel everybody is doing so much why aren't we uh, yeah. and uh, i think learning to be bored and cherishing being bored and disconnecting from these outside influences uh, in that vacuum i'm hoping one can think i don't know yet because i've not been able to get there we're all trying yeah. we're all trying okay yeah. one final hmm. word then nikhil uh, philanthropy right hmm. i mean you've decided to pledge half of your wealth and it very early on in your life was it a conscious decision was it a well thought out decision or was it on an impulse no reasonably well thought out uh, we've been doing philanthropy for a long time uh, i think we've been doing it uh, quietly compared to most people and to be truly honest and candid uh, sonia is i don't think philanthropy philanthropy is uh, selfless nor is it altruistic i feel like everything you do in life is appeasing your own morality in one way or another uh a lot of people do philanthropy because they feel better about themselves while they do it that is a bit big part of the trigger even for me but i enjoy being in that world and i enjoy some of the people i've met in that world and more power to you for everything that you do over and above beyond your business i thank you so much for being with us on our show and all the best thank you sonia madhy